achieved. Between the sea and the Jordan, there will only be Israeli sovereignty. So read the manifesto of the Israeli ruling Likid party, which was published in 1977. The then leadership of a former Israeli terrorist in the Haganah. Now, the Al-Aqsa flood, people are asking, why is it, what is Hamas's objective in conducting what it calls the Hamas Al-Aqsa flood? The American human rights ex-Marine, uh, Scott Ritter, he describes in a video I'm about to show you how Hamas has won the political fight against the most powerful military in the region, Israel, a terrorist state guilty of the mass murder of over 13,000 Palestinians in Gaza over the past 42 days. Now, according to Ritter, the elected government in Gaza, Hamas, now he says that because in the last election that was permitted by Israel, and by Fatah in the, in the West Bank, in the 2006 election, Hamas won a landslide victory in the Gaza Strip, defeating Mahmoud Habas's Fatah party. Now, it's important to remember that. According to Ritter, Hamas's objectives on the 7th of October were very simple. A free Palestinian state, freedom of practice of religion, of Muslim religion, at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and a return of the 10,000 Palestinian prisoners, hundreds of whom are children. Now, he describes how Netanyahu's terrorist government managed to turn world opinion against Israel on the streets of Jakarta, over two million people, London, approximately a million people, Tehran, Paris, Beirut, Berlin, Cairo, Algiers, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Bolivia, Mexico City, San Paolo, Havana, Melbourne, Sydney, and even Brisbane, Wellington, Auckland, Malaysia. These, all these cities in the in the last weekend, that is the weekend of the 18th and 19th of November 2023, have demanded um, a vote for Palestine in the United Nations for a ceasefire, an end to the occupation. Um, so to bring that into our local context, People have recognized that what is happening in Gaza is a genocide. It's a, it's, a, it's a war against humanity. The humanity that is there in the Gaza Strip, who are now being starved and, and made thirsty by the occupying force that is Israel, the force that will not allow anything in or anything out. And they've done so for the last 14 years. Okay, the response to October the 7th was predictable. Many predicted that Netanyahu's government would make a serious mistake and instead of appealing to the United Nations, went in with this crushing force of two nuclear bombs in TNT power raining down on the most concentrated strip of land on the planet. Now that has led to incredible numbers of deaths of, um, of Palestinians, half of whom or nearly half of whom have been children. And of course the part of the reason for that is that when Netanyahu told the Palestinians in Gaza City to leave and go to the south, they, they probably didn't want to, but the raining down of bombs already forced them out onto the roadways and out going south so that in the south 
immediately the buildings and the and where people were staying um, in apartment blocks there were like 30 50 100 people um, it just a concentration of 1.4 1.5 million brought into the the southern part immediately meant that there were great congregations of families and of course Netanyahu they bombed the south and that's why there are so many families who have lost nearly you know like 15 20 30 members of their family in one strike it was probably not the right thing to do to respond to Netanyahu's blanket uh, telling them to leave but you know when you when you're under fire and the bombs are raining down that's another matter it's a human thing to respond and we've seen them on the roads the Israelis trying to hunt them down the road by shooting at them as they're walking along with their with their what remains of their their clothing and food that they can carry and their children and 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 it's so that has been a terrible massacre now we're talking here about war crimes uh, crimes against humanity and I like just to for particularly our Australian audience and more particularly our Ukrainian audience I want to draw a historical truth um, because of course there is a, a terrible invasion has gone on in Ukraine causing uh, many much loss of civilian life but not on nearly on the scale of what we're talking about in Gaza but nonetheless quite horrific in 19, at the end of the First World War there was no such thing as a war of genocide there was really no real international criminal court and there was no such thing as a crime against humanity which is what is happening. This is what the Likud government in Israel is conducting against the Palestinians. But there were two men who lived in a place called Lemkin, and it is now called Lviv. So people will be aware that we're talking about Ukraine. Lemkin it used to be in Poland, but it's, it's become part of Ukraine. And these two lawyers, they thought up one and the other, lived actually in the same street in Lemkin, in modern day Lviv. It's called East West Street. And these two lawyers, one came up with the notion that there are such crimes as crimes against humanity. And there are there's an, and the other lawyer said, no, there are crimes you call must call genocide and sure enough when when the uh, the Nazis who ruled Lviv um, the, the, the the governor his name was Hans Franks and he wiped out conducted a pogrom against Poles socialists communists disabled people um, he, he, he conducted a camp a pogrom against Jewish people he was a true Nazi and when he came before the Nuremberg trial who should be in the courtroom but these two lawyers that posited this new kind of crime if you want to read about it it's called East West Street genocide and crimes against humanity and it's written by Philippe Sands and those two lawyers came up with the notion of what could happen if the the United Nations and the International Criminal Court is ever to lay their hands on Benjamin Netanyahu because he is surely guilty of those crimes and anyone who is complicit with him, for example, not that it'll ever happen, Joe Biden is complicit because he gave the green light for the Israelis to bomb the Al-Shifa hospital. 
I'll leave it to um, Scott Ritter to explain why that was both a crime against humanity and a genocide. Anyway, I just on a positive note, it was good to see how many people came out yesterday across Australia, and particularly also the medical people who came out, the nurses, the social workers, the doctors who came out and described the horrific uh, meaning of bombing of hospitals and schools. And I urge people to follow the Justice for Palestine Mianjin uh, Facebook page and also to, if you're in a union, to actually, I've noticed a couple of unions including the ETU have put bans on Israeli trade and also Israeli war materials. Um, there's another thought here that if it is true that the Australian government led by Anthony Albanese is supplying Israel with the, um, the, the, the missiles or, or the war machines, then he too would be complicit like Joe Biden. Um, Israel is actually running out of missiles to throw at Gaza. Um, they did, the United States did have to bring some that they'd given originally to Ukraine to fight against the Russians. They brought them down and they're now firing them at the Palestinians. So they, they are running out of missiles and I'm fearful now that their warplanes will, after Gaza, will go and attack um, southern Lebanon, targeting the, the people that support Palestine and people who align themselves with uh, the Hezbollah who are in the cabinet, the, the Lebanese government. They probably won't bomb the airport, they have bombed the, the Syrian airports but they probably won't bomb Beirut because the Americans don't want them to do that but they will I think certainly bomb um, the southern Lebanon and make them pay for their support of the Palestinian resistance. So that's it from me for now and I'll leave the the link down below for you to go and watch Scott Ritter's um, excellent you know military kind of mind and, and human rights mind to bring to bear upon this issue. Assalamu alaikum.